Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be working with the Context API with class-based components. So what the Context API allows us to do is create a global state that we can share with components without the need of prop drilling. All right, so to get started, let's talk about what prop drilling is. So for that, I'm going to bring up the official documentation. So they give a pretty good example, which is why I'm not giving my own. But within here, you can see that we have our app component, which is our root. And our app component is rendering our toolbar component and is passing a prop called theme. Now from here, if we take a look at our toolbar component, our toolbar component is just taking the props that it received from app, which is theme, and just passing it down to another component called theme button. And now if you take a look at theme button is doing the exact same thing. We're taking this prop called theme and just passing it to another component called button. So this is what's called prop drilling. So one way we could solve this is through the context API. So let's go ahead and take a look at our application. So our starter code just has our app component and a child component. So from here, what I want to do is let's open up the package explorer. So I'm going to hit control B and within our source directory, let's go ahead and create a folder called context. Now within this folder, we're going to create a file and this file is going to be called off context and hit control B again to close that out. And within here, let's go ahead and import react. And while we're up here, we're going to take out component as well. We're going to create a variable to hold it. So we'll say off context and we're going to assign it to react dot create context. Now what this off context is going to hold is two components. We're going to get a provider component and a consumer component. So a provider component is going to provide the data to whatever component you wrap it in. And the consumer component is going to allow a component to consume that data that's within the provider. So again, that's pretty confusing if you just listen to that. But what we can do is actually work this out. And the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and work on our off provider. So we're going to create a class to help us out. So we'll say class off provider. And what we want to do is define what data we want to share. So again, we're just working with a plain old class. So let's go ahead and create a state and we're going to have a username and a Boolean. So we'll say is authenticated and we'll initialize this to false. Next, we need a way to update the state. So let's go ahead and create a login. And we're just going to set this to dummy data. So we're not even going to get user input. And we'll set that to true that the user is logged in. Likewise, let's do that for a logout. And we'll just reset everything to the initial state. So now I have my data. Now I need a way to share it. So within the render method, and let me give me some space up here. What we're going to do is return our provider. So our provider, remember, is within our off context. So what we're going to do is use this to wrap whatever component that we pass in. So we'll have off context dot provider. And this is just a regular component. And all we're doing is wrapping this around this dot props dot children. Now this dot props dot children being the component or components that you want to provide this data to. And if any of these components that are wrapped within this provider contain any children, they will also have access to this data. So this prevents prop drilling. So we'll take a look at how we can use this in a second. 
Next, this provider component is going to need one prop called value. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and pull out the username and is authenticated from the state. Let's also go ahead and get our updater functions. And this is going to be located within this. Now what I want to do is pass this to our provider. So with this value prop, we could pass an object and within this object, we'll pass in the username is authenticated login and log out. Okay. So you get the following. So now what I want to do is I want to make our off context available outside this file. So we have no way of accessing off context or this class that we just created outside of this off context.js file. So what we're going to do is make this available to the outside world. So for our class, we'll just export this. And for our off context, what we're going to do is export this as the default. All right, so now we're ready to go back to our app component and actually use this. So what I'm going to do is save this, go back to our app.js file. And the first thing we should do is import what we just created. So now let's go ahead and use our off provider component that we created. So we're just going to say off provider. And within here, we could pass in a component that we want to share the data to. So the only component we have right now is the child component. Now this child component is going to be wrapped within here. So this dot props dot children is going to be this child component that we're passing in. And this child component is going to have access to whatever we pass in within this value prop. So we passed in this object. So our child component should have access to the username is authenticated login and log out. So now let's head back to our app component. And what we need to do is allow our child component to consume this data. So there are three ways we could go about doing this. So the first way is to attach a property to the child component. So we'll just say child dot context type, and we're going to set that to the context. So we have it set to off context. Now within here, what this is going to allow us to do within our child component is let us go ahead and within the render method, we can access the data within the provider and I'm just going to do a console log and we could print this out of this dot context. So let's go ahead and save this, take a look at the browser and we could go ahead and close this out. Go ahead and hit F12 and you can see that our child component has an object. And this object is from our provider. So if I just expand this, you see that we get is authenticated, login, logout, and username. So let's go ahead and let's comment this out and let's actually display this data. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull out everything from this dot context. And what we can do is just start displaying stuff. So let us go ahead and create another H1. Let's say user. And we'll display the username. And since we can't just outright display a Boolean, let's do a ternary operator. So if it is authenticated, we'll just say authenticated. And if it's not authenticated, we'll just say unauthenticated. Next, let's create a couple of buttons. And 
and we'll use our updater functions. All right, so now if I save this, take a look in the browser. Let me get some more space here. So we start off no user, authenticate is unauthenticated, hit login. You see that we log in as Bob, hit log out, it gets reset. Okay, so this is one way we could go about consuming the context. So another way is if I comment this out, what we can do is create a class property, but it has to be static. So we'll say static context type, and we set it to our off context. So now without even changing the code, we could go ahead and save this and this should work exactly the way that it's working before. So if I click log in, log in, click log out, log out. All right, so the first two ways are pretty simple. Now let's go ahead and talk about the third way. And to show you the third way, I'm just gonna create a new class. And from here, we're gonna have to take a trip back to our off context. And what we're gonna do is remember this off context object has a provider, but it also has a consumer. So what we're gonna need to do is export the consumer. So we could say export cons off consumer. And this should be capital. And this is gonna be located within our context object. So now that this is available to the outside world, let's go ahead and save this. And what we need to do is import this. And now what we can do is use this off consumer component. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll use this down here. And now this off consumer component is expecting a function. So what we can do, since this is JSX now, we use the curly braces like so, and we pass in a function, which is gonna get back the props or the data that our context is providing. And within here, we could do exactly what child is doing. So what I'm gonna do is just convert this. So I'm just gonna copy this. And instead of saying this.context, is going to be within our props. So we're going to pull that out. And all we need to do is copy this return. And we'll say child to component. So this is going to be used exactly the way as the first two. So our off consumer is going to consume the data that our provider provides for us. So what we can do is we could come up here. So this has to be within the off provider. So we could say child two, go ahead and render that out. Let's go ahead and save this. And there you go. So our child comp two component works perfectly fine. If I click login, you can see that our updater affects every component that consumes the data from our provider. So if I click log out, you can see that affects the other child. So they're all sharing the same state. So if you do something in one, it's gonna trigger a re-render in the other. So let's talk about the differences between this way and using this way. So if you're taking a look at this, you're probably horrified. You're like, why would I ever do it this way if I could just do it this way? Well, the reason you would want to do this is because this way allows you to consume multiple contexts. So for example, I'm going to bring up the React documentation again. So here they have an example. So here they have two providers. So they have a theme context and a user context, and they're wrapping the layout component here. Now, in order to consume this data, 
They use the theme context consumer here. You get a function and then they do it again with the user context consumer here and you get a function here again. So you could only do this by doing this with the consumer component like so. You cannot consume more than one context doing it this way. So if you only have one context, go ahead and do it this way. If you have multiple contexts, you're gonna have to do it this way. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say within this tutorial. So I hope you guys learned something and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial.